a last day of the month it is may the 31st running out of may and heading into june this is weather overtime for the last day of the month and welcome to weather overtime for those of you tuning in from wherever you happen to be thanks for joining us we're on a little later tonight thanks to again those perennial gremlins that seem to be a little bit of a problem for right now so for the time being we'll continue to see uh, some warm conditions rather on the humid side over the next few days more chances for showers and thunderstorms not a great deal and maybe a bit of a break coming up for the weekend but also some hotter weather coming on through as we get back into those dreaded 90s over the next several days we'll get to the current conditions out there and also take a look and see what's going on elsewhere not too bad bright across the area of downtown chattanooga back over toward lookout mountain on the right hand side of your screen otherwise glowing brightly there uh, doing around the area of lee point traffic very light almost non-existent a few cars out there from highway 153 and 64 so pretty quiet at that location from the news 12 studios looking back to the northwest north flank of lookout mountain over there on the left hand side and also traffic on broad street moving along pretty nicely for what there is of it likewise traffic doing quite nicely at the 7524 junction so not too bad out there for tonight dry there are some scattered showers around and about and temperatures are quite mild back into the lower to mid 70s with higher humidity values we do still have a few scattered showers just around the area north and west of chattanooga at just about 10 o'clock eastern time nothing huge and we'll continue to see some speckles of rain showers out there but once again we just don't have a lot going on a little bit more activity back to the east of us into western north carolina and up toward knoxville but again beyond that we've got little if anything tonight and more chances of the same popcorn type showers and thunderstorms over the next several days so we'll see how well that pans out into around the area toward the end of the week or so now through today again temperatures very close almost exactly spot on for where they should be and we did manage to pick up one one hundredth of an inch of rainfall but we're behind for the month nearly two inches and we're behind for the year nearly two and a half so we could definitely use some more rainfall out there nowhere close to our record low last setback in 1984 of 40 degrees thank you very much to kim wade native of riceville tennessee for a nice view of one of my favorite uh, national parks haven't been out there since 1980 somewhere in there uh, grand teton national park in wyoming thank you very much ms wade for sending that in if you've got pictures please send them into us pictures at wdef.com slash weather and of course give us some more details about where you were what you were doing or again give us an idea as to what goes on by posting that information on our social media pages but the email address is going to be your best bet to get it directly into our social media person and to make certain everything's taken care of there all right into the area of what's going on we've got our last storm system over the east coast stuck in place this is that storm system that wandered from florida up the east coast got a little stronger sent that cruise ship into a tizzy with again a lot of waterlogged compartments a lot of wind out there this thing is still hanging around it's dying out but it's going to be sticking around for a little bit our next storm system is developing over the gulf of mexico north of us we are seeing high pressure well in control so we don't have much helping us out in the way of allowing any storm systems to come in from the west coast no major systems coming on through here although the front range from new mexico to montana could be some severe weather out there in the course of the next day or two and could be a fairly high risk out that direction as well but that's the perfect time for this area of the country and areas well back towards south canada to pick up some storm stronger storms out there let's run the numbers again into tonight we'll be seeing the potential for showers and thunderstorms going away lower to mid 60s by tomorrow morning stray showers and thunderstorms tomorrow warm and pleasant again a very warm day coming up tomorrow cooling off for early friday morning and then another very warm day very humid with stray showers and thunderstorms possible and then as we get into saturday temperatures will be back into the lower 60s comfortable before going very warm again pushing it looks like lower 90s and also stray chances of showers and thunderstorms most of those should be confined back into parts of the appalachian some of that upslope flow might be creating a few more areas of activity back that way but for us 
we're just not picking up too much of anything going on in the way of major activity. Matter of fact, we've taken the chances of showers and thunderstorms out of the forecast for Saturday. But again, look what happens over the next week. We'll be seeing over the next several days, warmer temperatures, especially for the lower Mississippi Valley, also for much of the southeastern United States. In the next couple of days, temperature bar graph up here showing in 90s in red and coming close to the triple digits in the purple shaded areas. So we are looking at a pretty big warm up steadily gradually over the next few days but it is still going to be possible and we will see again that potential for the heaviest amount of heat coming up probably into somewhere around the second full week of june but it looks like our warmer weather is going to be continuing for the near future once again and good news uh, for right now we're not seeing any problems across much of the atlantic from west africa through the caribbean to the gulf there's really not that much going on in the way of any developing storms We'll talk more about climatology about that coming up here in just a little bit. Meanwhile, into around the area of the Gulf of Mexico, we do have a new storm system. It's gotten organized enough to where the National Hurricane Center gives it a title of Area of Investigation. So this is known as Invest 91L, and if I'm not mistaken, that 91 comes from the longitude that it shows up on, if I'm not entirely mistaken there, but Invest 91L showing again the potential of this storm system here, getting a little bit better organized, a 20% chance of organization in the next two to seven days. That doesn't sound like much, but if you have any plans for traveling to Florida or the East Coast where the storm system is heading, now is the time to definitely pay attention to what may be going on now what may be going on with the very warm temperatures the color scheme here is again the sea surface temperatures cooler again in orange and yellow warmer in red and very dark red so you can see the bathtub temperatures here lower to mid 80s and warmer weather is what it takes for these storm systems to get going the gulf stream showing up quite nicely here and as that storm system goes across florida it may encounter some of that but not enough to cause again a explosive development at least that's the way it looks for tonight that could definitely change now putting this into motion we call these spaghetti plot models or just spaghetti models uh start to see a bit of a change taking place here where the majority of some of these models are taking this thing on a hairpin curve back to the south and only a few of them are moving it across florida so it looks like we might be seeing a possible loop the loop here to where this could sit in place and again air around low pressure rotates counterclockwise so as this goes forward air around that area of low pressure could begin to give us some more rainfall chances as it pushes that moisture up this direction now whether or not that will take place that really again we need to watch very carefully but that those models that you see right there were not updated from earlier today so a lot of what may happen at this time this thing could backtrack a little bit depending on how things go so we'll be watching that with a lot of interest to see uh, what comes our direction and what might be going across florida but for right now a little bit on the iffy side there so we'll see again about what comes our direction from that but for right now Hopefully, again, things staying very much on the quiet side and remaining there. This is kind of interesting. Taking a look at the climatological possibility of storms forming, looking back at about the last 72 years of origins of storms coming on through, you can see that a good portion of these storms do actually start to form in parts of the western atlantic right where that one storm system is and right where that other storm system is about to be going to so for the possibility of the heavier storms going on looks like this the western caribbean over toward the bay of campeche and again into the west coast of the or western atlantic east coast united states that is where for the month of may for these years the bulk of most of the storms that have formed in that area are responsible for starting up those tropical storms and everything else that have moved on through so we'll do another plot for june coming up tomorrow so definitely want to stay tuned for that so for now again if you are going to be traveling this bears watching to see what goes on because this is a big split in the models to say that they're not quite in agreement as to what may be happening so that would be something that uh, we'll be keeping an eye on there speaking of the oceans on thursdays we try to take a look at what goes on and we're doing a bit of a early 
uh, rendering here to show you what's coming up tomorrow as it is the first day of hurricane season. Uh, we give you some information about what's going on out into the oceans, about how the oceans are absorbing the heat of climate change, and that's causing a lot of effects from melting glaciers to more powerful storms to heat waves to a more powerful El Nino, and humans are causing that. That's, again, not a problem for consideration because it is what it is. It is going on. We are causing it. But some links and some more notice about what goes on in the ocean, helping you to stay aware of what is going on out there. We'd like to bring more of that to you. We'd like to bring you more about, again, what's happening with the environment, concentrating on global warming, climate change, things of that nature to keep you advised so you can help out save our planet, our only home in space. The links this week are pretty cool. Colossal corals from National Marine Sanctuaries, taking a look at these almost house size uh, levels of corals out in the Indian and the southwestern Pacific Ocean. Some amazing looks at some of those things from the areas that are set apart, the sanctuaries in the oceans where there's no mining, no farming, uh, anything the way of pollution is banned, things like that to save parts of the ocean right there. From Dive 15, from NOAA Ocean Exploration, looking at the Medusa jellyfish and a beautiful uh, look at uh, one of the more mysterious creatures in the ocean, so ability to see more about that. And talking again about sanctuaries, national marine protected areas as climate change solutions. The more we set aside in the way of areas that cannot be mined or changed or dredged or anything else and they're totally set aside as areas where wildlife can thrive they can also be good carbon sinks to where the carbon is taken out of the atmosphere and placed in the ground or the water and the ground beneath the water as well so if you'd like to see these links all you have to do is stay tuned to my social media pages. You can also find out more. Again, most of these are posted on Facebook, Twitter, but I'm also on Counter Social, Mastodon, and Post.News if you'd like to follow along with more going on there. Also, we'll talk more about things on my YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget again that NOAA put out their outlook for hurricane season, a near normal season coming up for this year. I talk more about that in detail on our What I Want to Know show. Uh, just a 10 minute course on what is going on science, meteorolo meteorology, anything like that, our ability to find out more details, talking about things, hopefully gauging some interest out there. And if you, excuse me, like to see the What I Want to Know show, please drop by and find out more on my YouTube channel where you can find me at meteorologistaustin.onic. And of course, we'll have more coming up on the forecast over the next several days in regards to what's happening with hurricane season now that it starts in just a little bit, a little bit less than about two hours or so. That'll wrap it up for tonight. Fairly quiet across the area. And again, we'll have more details on the forecast coming up bright and early with Chip Chapman, 5 a.m. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Stay tuned for more on our news at 11. If you can stay tuned for that. Chip again tomorrow morning at 5. And of course, a lot more coming up at WDEF.com slash weather. Stay tuned for more with News 12 on air and online. And thanks for joining us for tonight's exclusive video weather blog from News 12 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Weather Overtime, we thank you for joining us.